What's up everybody? So today we're gonna be defying gravity. I'm gonna show you how to create a free floating object out of a solid piece of 6061 aluminum billet using nothing but a three axis mill and two cutting tools. Now this ball in a cage may look like just a toy, but this is an excellent way to stress the importance of the fundamentals and having a perfect setup. This is a great project for students or apprentices because it really puts a lot of emphasis on how important the fundamentals are. Now here is the secret to what makes today's project possible. We already have our vise installed on the table and we have plenty of videos out there that show you how to do this effectively. So let's check and make sure that our vise is perfectly straight and flat before we get started squaring our stock. We're gonna grab our mid-tutorial 110 increment indicator and we're we're gonna check that vise to make sure that it's perfectly aligned to our table. All right, so having a perfect setup is super critical when you're doing tight tolerance parts. So you can see that our vise is straight to our x-axis within two tenths, and that's pretty straight by most standards. So now that we know our x is straight, we're gonna come in and check that our z-axis is flat to our table as well. This will ensure that there's no chips under our vise or anything else that we don't anticipate later. Now the reason that this project is so good for stressing fundamentals is it really emphasizes the importance of tolerance stack up. So you can see that we had two tenths in x and two tenths in z on our vise, and that's pretty good. But now when you add in factors like the squareness of your stock and the size of your stock, in addition to the length of your tool and the location of your stock, you're really gonna see these variables and how they affect your finished product. So now that we have our vise indicated in the, within a couple of tenths, both in Z and in X, ready to start putting our part in there to get our first face faced off. Now something I want to point out is that we're going to have three different surfaces that are all vying for control of where our part ends up in space. We have our fixed jaw face, floor of our vise, and the floating jaw. On our part, we have two saw cut faces and then four faces that are from the mill. Now I trust these faces from the mill more than I do our saw cut faces, so we're gonna use those against our fixed jaw. Our fixed jaw is master. Now to keep from our fixed jaw face having to fight the floor or the floating jaw face, we're gonna use two special tricks to keep our part square. The first thing is we're gonna throw these parallels in against our fixed jaw. And these parallels are pretty cool because they have a little neodymium magnet in both ends of it that helps it stick to the face of the jaw. So we're gonna make sure everything's clean we're gonna pop these parallels in and make sure that they're seated all the way down to the floor of the vise. Now we're gonna take our stock and sit it on top of those parallels and butt it up against the 246 block we have bolted to our table. Finally, we have this one inch rod that we've cut in half. And what this does is help us to minimize the amount of contact between the floating jaw and our stock. So we're gonna slide that in there and then we're gonna snug up our vise. Now something to be careful of is that we don't wanna start with our part cocked. We want it up against the fixed jaw of the vise as flat as possible before we snug the vise up. Now the first two cuts that we make on this stock aren't gonna be aggressive. They're gonna be minimum skim cut passes. So we really don't need to torque our vise down very hard. We just need to make sure that we're holding our part securely. Now we're gonna give our part a little bit of tap on top of those parallels just to make sure that everything's seated all the way down and flat. Now that I feel like everything's sitting good and flush, I'm gonna go ahead and torque the vise. Now that we have the bottom of our part kind of up in the air, just sitting on this one parallel, we have our half rod sitting in here, minimizing our surface contact. This first face we cut should be perfectly perpendicular to our fixed jaw. Yeah, buddy. Now that we've faced off the top face of our stock, the most important thing is that this face ends up against our fixed jaw. This is gonna guarantee that our second face, the adjacent face, is gonna be perfectly perpendicular to the face that we've already cut. So for the second side, we're gonna use our parallels again and this half rod. For this operation, our X doesn't matter very much. We don't really care where the stock is in X. All we care about is the perpendicularity between this first face and the second face that we're cutting. All right, we're locked down. Time to cut our second face. All right, now that we have our second face cut, we're ready to pull those parallels out and we can set our first face down into the bottom of the vise. For this third side though, we're gonna continue to use this half rod. Like I talked about in the beginning of the video, keeping everything spotlessly clean is crucial for this to be a successful operation. 
Now, a couple of things about this third face. For this part, not only is our squareness critical, but our size is also critical. For this face, because we're cutting a face that's parallel to a face that's already finished, we're gonna comp our tool up a little bit before we take it down to size. Just make sure that we don't cut too much material away and we can creep into our perfect three inch dimension. Something else that I wanna point out is that I have the left side of this block hanging out the end of the vise. This is so that I can fit a mic in here so that I can check our width and make sure that it's perfectly three inches before I take it out of the vise. Oh, your camera died right here. Too hot. You know it's too hot. All right, so we've taken our first pass on our third side. Now we're gonna see what the part actually measures. We're looking for exactly three inches. So that's perfect. I'm not gonna comp our tool at all. I'm gonna leave it exactly there. So for the fourth side of this part, we don't have to do anything special. We're gonna remove our half rod. And now that we have two perfectly parallel faces and one adjacent face that's perfectly perpendicular, we can throw this in our vise just the way it is. So now we're gonna take our part to where our two parallel sides are facing the two jaws and our adjacent side that's faced is gonna to go to the bottom of the vise. All right, let's face side four. All right, so we're gonna make sure that our two parallel sides that we just finished are the size. You can see there, we're within our one thou tolerance. For this part, we're good enough as is. Now we've got our first four faces squared up and we're on to our fifth face. Now this fifth face is where you can really screw things up if you're not careful. And for this fifth face, we're gonna be sitting on a saw cut edge. We'll have a saw cut edge facing up and a saw cut edge facing down. Now these faces aren't perpendicular to the faces that we've already cut. So the important thing is when we set this down in the vise, we may be cocked in an angle right now. So if we were to cut this face as is, we're not gonna be perpendicular to the faces we've cut. So that's the purpose of this 246 block we have here. We're gonna take our stock, push it up against that 246 block and against the fixed jaw, and then we're gonna snug our vise. We can cut our fifth face now. We're just gonna do a skim cut here so we don't really care about the height of our tool. All systems go. We now have our fifth face cut and we're on to our final face of this part. So again, we're gonna comp our tool positive to keep it away from the stock a little bit so we can creep in to hit that perfect three inch dimension. And let's take this final face. All right, so now we're at one thou oversized from perfect, so that's close enough. We're ready to start making our ball in the box. Now, something that I wanted to bring up is you guys may have noticed that I'm taking the tool across in both directions. The reason that I'm doing this is because as we come across this way, we're pushing our bird toward the center of our stock. Then as we change direction, we start pushing this bird toward the center of stock. So that leaves almost a burr-free edge. That makes it super easy to get rid of the tiny little bird that may be there with a file or a burr knife. All right, so you'll see here we have a big old V block. Now this isn't the best way to measure squareness, but just for you guys to be able to see how square this block is, we're gonna throw it in here and show you each side. So you can see there's no rock, no gap, no rock, no gap, same, same, and I will flip it, no rock, no gap. All right, so this block is perfectly square and perfectly to size. It may actually be the squarest block I've ever made. Now let's get to the fun part, making our ball in the box. All right, let's do it. Whoops. Whoopsie. What, what camera? Ain't no camera over there. <laughs> spherical. Oh man. It's nice. 
We have our ball in our box modeled up here in SolidWorks. We take a look at the size of the ball in the box. These are the exact dimensions that we're going to use to make our actual finished part. Now another awesome part about this project is that it only takes an hour to machine this entire part. So you see we're running the same program for every side of this part and each side is taking about 7 minutes and 29 seconds. the secret to what makes today's project possible. Now that we've cut five sides of the part, if we go in to cut the fifth side, that ball is going to be free floating at some point and it's just going to fall away from our cutting tool. So we had Trevor 3D print us some special jaws that are going to suspend this sphere in midair and hold the cage at the same time. Now these jaws could also be machined out of aluminum, but for the sake of simplicity, we decided to 3D print ours. Now let's get these suckers installed. So we're getting ready to do our final operation of the ball in the box. Now we use a different program for this operation. We use the same program for the first five sides. The only difference in this op is that we're taking a lighter step over. We cut our step over in half, but we're running the same feeds and speeds. Now with these plastic jaws, we want to be careful not to over torque our vise, but just get it snug enough that we're sure that that ball isn't going to move once it breaks free. All right, we're ready to probe our stock. So now that we've finished the sixth side of our ball in a cage, you can see that we now have two completely separate bodies that are held in by our 3D printed jaws. If you take a look at this, you can see that the sphere can't come out of any side of the cage. It's trapped within its cage. Now, if you take a look at the sphere, you can see little mismatches here and there. And that's why this project is such a good illustration of how important the fundamentals are to the overall quality of your finished part. All right, so I hope you guys liked today's video. If you end up making one of these in your own shop, tag us on our Facebook machinist group or on Instagram and let us see how good your fundamentals are. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys again next time.